We're going to talk about drivetrain a little bit, and drivetrain actually means uh, transmission and how the power gets to the driven wheels on the vehicle. This happens to be a front wheel drive car. We just talked about transmissions. You can see the bottom of the transmission right here, and you can see the uh, bottom of the engine right here. And of course we want to look at the final drive, so the final drive is right out through here. We have two axle half shafts. We have a CV joint, an outer CV joint, and an inner CV joint right here. And the power is actually transmitted through the transmission. This whole setup actually rotates, as you can see, and also is able to change angles. So right now the wheels are hanging down because this vehicle's up on the hoist. There's no weight on it, but you want to remember this wheel is going up and down, up and down, up and down. So that shaft actually has to be able to move up and down, change its angle at the same time it's rotating because torque is being applied to that axle to actually rotate the wheel. You have the same thing on the other side right here. You have another outer CV joint and you have an inner and what you want to always make sure on the CV joints is that you check the boots because these boots do tend to tear or rupture after a period of time. One easy sign that your boot is ruptured if you notice in the wheel opening which would be right up in here, you'll see grease spattered. You can usually see that on the outside of the car, and that's because the CV joint went away. Uh, those can be easily serviced and they're not too expensive. You can even get completely remanufactured axles. So this basically is a uh, front wheel drive setup uh, on, on a vehicle. Okay, this is a uh, Model T Ford chassis right here. The body's been removed and we came out here to uh, actually show you uh, powertrain. Uh, and it really hasn't changed too much. This is a front engine, rear wheel drive vehicle. The transmission is actually located right here. And this is actually like uh, the uh, you know, pre forerunner of the uh, modern automatic transmission. This transmission is a two-speed transmission, but it is engaged and disengaged mechanically. All you have to do on this Model T is step down on the pedal. When you push the pedal in, and I can do that. I'm in low gear right now, and when I let it out all the way, I'm in high gear. Real simple. Parking brake also controls that too. It has to snap back in high gear. If I pull the parking brake up, it puts it in neutral. I push it forward, it's in high gear. I push down, it's in low gear. Okay, power is transferred from the transmission to the drive shaft. So you see this long tube going all the way back. This is actually a torque tube. These are not used anymore, not even on rear wheel drive cars. Haven't been really been used since the early 1960s. And the actual drive shaft is inside the tube. And then that power goes to the differential unit. And this is the differential unit right here. Uh, the differential unit also has a uh, fixed gear reduction in it, and the other thing it has to do is transfer power 90 degrees to the rear wheels. So it actually has to go out to the rear wheels and be transferred. So it has to change the direction of power as well as uh, multiply the torque. So whatever the, you know, if the transmission is in high gear, that's usually a one-to-one -one ratio. Uh, if this has a three-to-one ratio in the, in the differential, you're going to get a three-to-one reduction. And these are calculated based on the horsepower of the engine and the speed and the loads at which the engine is, is, is driven. So that all takes place. Again, this is a Model T Ford chassis. This happens to be a late Model T, late uh, 20s Model T. And um, again, uh, nothing much has changed as far as technology. It's all pretty basic, pretty much the same. The only thing that uh, we have are limited slip differentials. Uh, Again, uh, this will allow greater traction. If uh, one wheel tends to slip or slide, it'll deliver the power to the other. Uh, a lot of this has been replaced with electronic systems such as uh, traction control and things like that where we use the brakes instead of to slow down a wheel. It's getting too much power and then the power will automatically be delivered to the other wheel. Another thing a differential has to do, what we call differential action, actually has to allow the wheels to turn at different speeds in a corner. If we weren't able to slow the inside wheel down in a corner and cause the outside wheel to pick up speed, the car would hop and bounce around a corner and uh, a lot of people would uh, uh, find that uh, very difficult to deal with. <laughs>